what's up guys? It's Mr. Wolf uh, reporting from the Wolf House in the wake of this uh, coronavirus quarantine that we have going on. I'm going to try to bring you as much welding information as I can from the comfort of my living room here. Um, this is going to take some getting used to for me, to be honest with you. I've never done videos like this before. I'm used to seeing your faces in a classroom, not talking to a phone. Um, you'll probably hear some things through the course of this video, like people yelling, fighting, dogs barking. Um, my kids are home too. So there's going to be a lot of things in the background that you're going to have to uh, kindly ignore. But uh, without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and start talking about material science and welding. Uh, our objectives here are going to be to define metallurgy terms, compare and contrast ferrous and non-ferrous metals, Describe three physical properties of metals. Describe five mechanical properties of metals. Compare and contrast different types of ferrous metals based on carbon content and uses. Um, the first two things that we're going to be focused on right now are defining metallurgy, metallurgy terms and comparing and contrasting ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Ms. Hedstrom has put together a Quizlet for you on this unit. It's available now. Um, we'll probably be taking that vocab quiz next Thursday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, along with a unit quiz next Friday. So um, I am going to be pausing in, in between these and taking up a little bit of time and noting stuff that you need to take down uh, in your notepad. Hopefully you brought that home with you. If not, start a new one. Um, so first thing we're going to look at are the terms that we're going to be using in this particular uh, lesson. Sorry, bear with me here. Ferrite. That is pure iron crystalline or crystal structure. Alloy, a material having metallic characteristics and made up of two or more elements, one of which is metal. Ferrous metals, metals that contain iron as the primary element. Ferrous metals are the most common type of welded metal. Non-ferrous metal, a metal that does not contain iron. Non-ferrous metals are more difficult to weld than ferrous metals. Magnetic, a material that can be attracted to magnets. Magnetic forces can be used to weld work pieces together. So introduction, we use a wide variety of, variety of metals, including steel, cast iron, aluminum, and stainless steel to build things. Not surprisingly, different metals react to the welding process in different ways. In addition, differences in their chemical properties make some materials more suitable than others uh, are specific applications. For example, some metals are excellent conductors of heat and electricity, some are used to coat other metals, and still others are used in the food industry. Welders must be familiar with the wide range of properties of metals in order to create the best weld possible. So types of metal. Go ahead and, and uh, make a headline on your notepad and label it types of metal. There are two primary classification of metals, ferrous and non-ferrous. So we've talked about this a little bit in class before. Ferrous materials are those that contain iron. Non-ferrous are those that don't have iron. Uh, so your ferrous metals are your carbon steels, and your non-ferrous metals are the ones that don't have iron in them, like stainless steels, aluminum, copper, things of that nature. Uh, two characteristics that those things uh, have, or I guess one characteristic that's different for each one of them, is that the ones with ferrous, or the ferrous metals, those that contain iron, typically don't have uh, a magnetic or I'm sorry, typically do have a magnetic property. Those that don't have non-ferrous materials typically don't have, they either have a very weak or no magnetic property at all. Um, so we said carbon steels are the types that are, that are ferrous metals. Uh, there's others we'll go over too, but non-ferrous metals um, are your aluminums, your inconels, uh, titanium, um, uh, stainless steels, things like that. Um, so the two types of uh, metals, ferrous and non-ferrous, 
Ferrous metals, the primary element in ferrous metals is iron. Chemical terms for iron, such as chemical symbol Fe, and the names of iron compounds come from the Latin word for iron, ferrum. Ferrite is the form of pure iron found at room temperature. These three, these three terms right here we just covered um, briefly in your vocab. You can find those in your vocab list. Ferrous, non-ferrous, ferrite, uh, and non-ferrous. The primary elements in the non-ferrous metals are not iron. Table 1 lists a variety of common non-ferrous metals. So here in Table 1, non-ferrous, again, not having iron or aluminum. It's a lightweight, good conductor of heat and electricity. We've talked about this before as far as aluminum's um, heat thermal conductivity. Uh, you know, when we weld aluminum, that heat disperses over the entire piece of aluminum that we're welding. Uh, and goes much further than the heat-affected heat zone itself. On the opposite side of that, when we weld steel, if it's a thick enough plate, it typically that heat will stay within certain confines of that heat-affected zone. It won't conduct that heat as well as it does aluminum. If I weld a piece of, uh, of carbon steel on one corner of a 4 by 8 sheet, I'll more than likely be able to put my finger on the opposite end of that four by eight sheet and not feel a single bit of the heat transferred from the weld in the opposite corner. The same thing is not true for aluminum. Typically, if I were to get enough heat to the corner of aluminum, I would be able to feel that heat transfer through that piece of aluminum to the other side of it, making the, the thermal conductivity properties of aluminum much higher than that of like steel. Um, copper. It's an excellent conductor of heat and electricity, resistant to corrosion. Uh, that's something that it doesn't have for aluminum there either, but aluminum is also resistant to corrosion. As far as copper being an excellent conductor, you see this in a lot of your uh, electrical fittings, things of that nature. Your wiring, obviously, is, of, is that of copper. Um, that electrical conductivity makes it very valuable for that purpose. Magnesium, it's a lightweight, it's lighter than aluminum. It's used to build lightweight components to save energy. It will burn violently and produce toxic magnesium oxide smoke. Uh, nickel, it's used as an alloy with iron to produce nickel steel and stainless steels. Produces tough, higher strength materials. Tin, it's used for food and agriculture industries to protect uh, products as a coating or a plating. So 10, you find that in a lot of your uh, canned goods. Uh, this is another continuance of uh, non-ferrous metals. You have zinc, common used to coat metallic, or metallic metals like sheets of steel to prevent corrosion or rust. Galvanized steel has zinc coating, toxic to weld. So this is the type of material that you hear stories about uh, people welding all day long and getting sick from. Galvanized coating is made of zinc. That coating is basically heated up and uh, metal or dipped into that coating to give it a, a corrosion resistance covering. So a lot of your outdoor uh, steel structures are, are, a lot of them are galvanized coated that contains zinc and all that does is protect the, the, the steel underneath from the, um, from the elements and causing corrosion. Uh, as far as it being dangerous to weld, it is dangerous to weld. Uh, it's preferred that you use a respirator when you weld it. A lot of old timers are going to tell you to drink a glass of milk. I prefer a respirator. That way you don't get sick when you do weld it. Titanium, it's a lightweight, high strength metal used to save energy by reducing material weight. This is, this is a material used a lot uh, in addition with uh, stainless steel, cobalt, ink and nail. Titanium is a very big staple in the uh, aerospace industry. All ferrous metals are iron based and therefore it is common for these types of iron and steel to be strongly magnetic. Again, that's where we find this. So all ferrous metals or metals that have iron in them and are magnetic. Um, however, non-ferrous metals contain no iron and therefore most have very weak to no magnetic properties. So a real quick way to tell the difference between ferrous and non-ferrous, get the magnet out. Put the magnet on the piece of uh, ferrous material, it's going to stick. Take it to a piece of stainless steel. If it's cheap stainless steel that has some carbon in it or some iron in it, you will find that it's slightly magnetic. But typically, a high-grade stainless steel is not going to have magnetic properties. Neither is aluminum, 
um, titanium, Inconel, uh, any of those non-ferrous metals. So a real quick way, other than spark testing, is to take a magnet to it. And if it's magnetic, you have a ferrous material. If it's not magnetic, you have a non-ferrous material. Um, alloys are metals made of a combination of metals and other elements that are sub, uh, substantially change their physical and mechanical properties. An example is stainless steel. A stainless steel is an alloy made of iron, nickel, and chromium. So hopefully that wasn't too bad for the first video, the difference between ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Again, non-ferrous metals do not contain iron. Ferrous metals contain iron. Ferrous metals are not magnet or are magnetic rather. Non-ferrous metals are not magnetic. The, the um, properties of those metals are quite different. Um, and we're going to go over that in, a, in another lesson. Basically the way this is going to work, you're going to review this, take notes accordingly, and then you will have an op opportunity to log into Quizlet, look over the vocab words for the entire unit, and I'll be bringing you another video uh, tomorrow on the next section. The next section we'll be talking about physical properties of metal. Um, so stay tuned, stay safe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.